And we're back with some more satisfactory. And today we're going to be expanding our weird main bus looking monstrosity of a base. However, there's a few things we need to take care of first. Namely, what are we going to get next? And I'm thinking the next most logical choice to go for is aluminum. And uh, the reason being, if we go and check in here, logistics wise, conveyor belt Mark V are the best belts you can currently get. And to build them, all you need is this thing called Aluclad. It's made of aluminum ingots and copper. But this is way easier to produce and cheaper than producing the encased industrial beams which we currently use to produce our Mark IV belts. It's, it's, just, it's just cheaper to make Mark V belts, which seems a little bit counterintuitive, but mm, there is a bit of difficulty involved in producing this Aluclad. Uh, the first thing that's the problem is we need to find ourselves some bauxite. Hmm, let me show you a few things on the recipe section. Producing this Alucad seems fairly straightforward at first. You're going to need some aluminum ingots and copper ingots. That's it. Combine them together and you get the Alucad. It's actually pretty cheap looking when you just look at the aluminum ingots. However, to make aluminum ingots, you have two choices. You've got the uh, aluminum scrap combined with silica or aluminum scrap on its own. The aluminum scrap is less efficient, but you don't need silica which is actually going to be important for us. So we're, we're going to end up using this recipe despite it being less efficient in aluminum scrap, though, yeah, hold your horses, this gets even more complicated. To make aluminum scrap, things get interesting. There are three potential recipes. Now, the first one you can ignore entirely. This requires alumina, solution, and coal, which, uh, yeah, don't bother. It's just, it's just not worth the effort, which leaves us with this electrode aluminum scrap version and the instant scrap. Now, these two look completely different to each other, but long story short, this uses the exact same amount of bauxite to produce 30 aluminum scrap as this will use alumin or, or bauxite to produce aluminum scrap. Everything comes from bauxite, so either w which one of these you pick, they're both going to be equally efficient in terms of producing aluminum scrap from bauxite. However, this one requires more coal, sulfuric acid, w like this requires a whole bunch more stuff, so this one's actually less efficient. So, we just need alumina solution and petroleum coke. Uh, the alumina solution we just get from bauxite by mixing it with water. We're going to use this sloppy aluminum recipe. Uh, sorry, sloppy alumina. And that requires 10 bauxite, 10 water, and we get 12 alumina solution. That's what makes it just as equal in terms of uh, cost as this one down here. Then, of course, there's the second problem. We need petroleum coke to go with that aluminum solution to make the aluminum scrap, which is, is fine. To make petroleum coke, you just need heavy oil residue. So we get four heavy oil residue and we can make 12 petroleum coke. So it's actually quite efficient in terms of oil to produce lots of this stuff. However, to make the heavy oil residue, well, there's a lot of different recipes, but the one we're going to be using is the heavy oil residue, which is the most efficient one. Everyone uses this. In fact, Light Games is an incredibly popular recipe. All the excess polymer resin that gets produced from this, though, we're going to have to trash. So, we need a place that's got bauxite and crude oil available, and we should be able to make this stuff. And if we had some other stuff available like silica, we could actually increase our efficiency even more. This here is a map of Satisfactory, and our base is located up here. Our space elevator is over here, the base is all stretched along this section. This is a list of all the pure bauxite nodes on the map. As you can see, there is only six. Uh, there's also six non-pure nodes, and you'll see they're all stretched right across the center of the map, and even the impure nodes, of which there were five, yeah, all straight down the middle. Then, though, we have to see where the oil is. Now, the oil is sort of clustered in the same spots as well. We got two over here, one in the middle, and a few around the sides. And there you go. You'll see they're all kind of, even the impure and all of them, they're all clustered around three main spots. Well, four. One here, one here, one here, and a whole bunch across here. We don't have access to the resource wells yet. That's a tier eight tech, so we can't access those. They also have some extra oil deposits over here in a few other places. But it sort of limits us in where we can operate if we're going to use the petroleum coke recipe. Which, I should point out, is better than using some of the other ones because, say, uh, for this one we would need sulfur, sulfuric acid, and coal. So if you want to do the instant scrap recipe, you need to look out for two other things near it. It gets really complicated. But, as you can see, we've got oil over here and bauxite, and we've got oil over here and bauxite. But we also need a few other things, namely copper. What I'd like to do is do the production on site, and some of these uh, things, like the Alucad sheets they require copper ingots. So maybe we could just make those on site. There's also this aluminum casing we're going to have to make and a cheaper version of them comes with copper ingots too. So maybe if we could find some close by copper, that would help, which kind of places us around this section. But in the end, I decided to do this section over here, namely because there's two pure bauxite nodes right there. Uh, at the same time, there's plenty of oil around, though we don't need that much of it. And there is some copper nearby. In fact, if we include the impure or the regular nodes, just the normal nodes, there's three copper here 
one pure copper there and if you could get that copper from these locations over to this section we could actually produce a well, make a little mini factory here which I kind of want to do that sort of uh, just one of the little goals I wanted to have but at the same time we're going to need a train to run around here and the train has to come down and take up all the alucad and aluminum casing we're going to be doing this alucad here and then the aluminium casing here and if we chuck those on trains we can cart those all back uh, that's the theory so first up I want to actually put in a little rail and I sort of want to go up here across the top and then down Eh, in straight lines. I don't want to sort of cut across like that. So I wanted to put a train out like this, then down like that. Maybe come down a little bit further, cut across here, uh, go up and back into our base. This sort of gives us a, will give us the core of a train network that covers most of the area. And then we can feed resources on that to go back to our base if necessary. So basically there's going to be a massive train building montage. Over here is the train station. Uh, this thing comes in sections, namely, well, five. This is what they call a freight platform. The e -base, you just plug these in. There we go. Anyway, there you can see you can put the inputs and outputs, but what'll happen is you'll have a freight car attached to this train and this will load it and unload it. Honestly, I haven't even gotten around to testing it yet. I just uh, want to run the massive rail lines first. And then at the front here, we actually have the stuff where the locomotive will pull up. We're going to use four train cars, one locomotive, and then we're going to keep the rail perfectly steady. Uh, if we go over here, let's say, uh, we can see... I've got a rail coming down this section and sort of spits off down there and comes into this and then goes back onto what's hopefully going to be our main rail. This used not to work in the previous patch and I can't find any notes from anyone whether it does now, but I don't care. I want to try it. Oh, and I've installed a couple of mods on top of the, the base one, the smart mod. The first one is uh, always daytime. So it's now always daytime and we don't have to care. And the second one is I installed a hotkey mod. So if I press Y on my keyboard now, I, I set up the the changes, it switches me to my Blade Runners, so I can run really fast. And then if I hit Z, I can switch straight to my jetpack. And then if I hit H, I switch to my gas mask. It just added hotkeys for those things, so I don't have to go into my menu in here and switch things out. I can just, oh, it's so handy. So you can do crazy things like, oh, do a sprint jump with your blades, switch to your jetpack and immediately just start hovering with ease, as opposed to just having to run in here and quickly fumble around like a, mm. I really wish that was in by default. Anyway, excuse me while I run a whole bunch of rail. When laying rails, there's a bit of a trick to it, especially when you're taking corners. Corners will really mess up how straight you can lay your rail tracks. Well, this is what I've discovered anyway. So when you're trying to take a corner, your best bet is to, well, make the corner first, then try and connect up the two of them together. Otherwise you're gonna end up with weird wonky rails. That gives us a nice corner and then we should be able to proceed straight on this direction. Oh my god, I'm going to run into that cliff, aren't I? Maybe I should have went a little bit further. So, a long, long, long time later. There's there's that corner we were standing at way over there. So that corner goes all the way around there. And uh, you know what? This is where we are standing. And we are looking down at our base over here. And across to this section where there's the rail line taking the corner. And then that whole rail line comes straight down here. And uh, yeah, it sort of looks like that. There was a few turns to avoid cliffs and stuff. Uh, I haven't actually finished the rails from there on, but I'm trying to somehow line these two up here so that I can get these two to meet up because we're now at different heights. We had to have go up a few meters to avoid terrain and things like that. So I'm thinking I'm going to go down there and reverse build it back up. But yes, this has been uh, interesting. We've now got a sort of a loop going around and we can start chucking trains onto this as we need to pull in more resources, uh, if and when. And also we can extend this on further. There's other stuff we can do, but for now, for now, let's get this finished. This is the finished rail grid. I went back, I did all the rails the whole way around, and I even put in the uh, the signals to break up the rails into chunks. Uh, more on that when we actually start putting in train stations. Turns out this thing has no problem pathing through trees. Uh, I used to blow up some of the trees that were getting in the way, but after a while I'm like, you know what, it adds a little bit of character to the track if you have to drive through all these things. And the fact that we're using, uh, well, platforms to get around everywhere really cuts down on the amount of baddies I had to kill. I still had to kill an awful lot of stuff as I was wandering around, but in general it was a little bit easier when you're building platforms. Oh, and when it comes to hills, I'm using the one meter incline ones. They are they're actually so handy. The reason being, you can still slide up and down them. Now, I did use some two meter ones right here, but that was only because I was going to run into a cliff if I didn't. So they're the only two meter ones on the entire rail network. And then we have this uh, very, very slow deep line here. This leads all the way down to our base. I uh, made a few changes here later on. I, this was actually meant to be much higher up, but I switched it to lower down so that we can more easily bridge on more stuff when the time comes. And this whole rail network comes all the way back around here to our base. Now the theory is this. This is going to be a circular rail network. I love these things. 
Uh, if you want, you can go straight on and keep going, assuming this is not your station. But if this is your station, you can take a right in here and park up your train to unload or do whatever you're doing. And boom. So this would come in here and stop at this train station, and oh my god, yeah, these things, they take a while to break. Yeah, I'd, I'd really need to practice that more, but it should be automated when we're done. Alright, with that finished, uh, the plan will be to go over here and set up our al aluminum production facility. That... Yeah, let me load up on supplies first. This here is where we're going to set up our bauxite mine. Yeah, it took... It was, it was an interesting task clearing this area. There was a lot of monsters here. But anyway, this bauxite is plugged in here. It's a Mark II mine, though we've only been using layer 3 transport belt for now. We're going to upgrade it to level 5 later on. We've got it overclocked just a little bit. This is going to give us 270 bauxite to start, but the plan is going to be the first Alucad sheets off are going to be used to upgrade this line so we can produce more aluminum. Now, uh, down here, this goes all the way down to the bottom. Now, there's, there's methods of the madness. You see, there's oil over there on those islands, and we want to bring all of this down. And Ooh, is that a bug over there? Yeah, I'm going to go grab that bug real quick. Come here. Come here, you. Ooh, ooh. And... Damn it, damn it, damn it! Hey, you. Go away. Well, that took an awful lot more effort from what we should have been just grabbing a quick slug. Hey, give me the slug. Stop, stop, stop toying with me. God damn it. <laughs> Sometimes this game just... I feel like it's messing with me. All right, where were we? Ah, yes, we were going to get uh, a whole bunch of aluminum. This here is the bottom of our conveyor lift. It it comes down quite a bit. Now, if we turn around here and head over this direction, you'll find we've started to put together a little platform over here. This platform is where we're going to build our Alucad facility. I may need to expand this a little bit more later, but for now, this leads all the way over here, and just behind that hill over there, there's a bunch of oil. Well, there's a normal oil node. We don't need a lot of oil to make the uh, aluminum, considering the recipes we're using, but that refinery right there is what's going to provide the oil. And then when this product is finished, we have got the train line over there. Now, that means we are going to have to conveyor lift it up, but I would rather keep the trains on a flat level, because otherwise you have to, well, if the trains have to go up and down inclines, you're going to have to put a whole bunch of locomotives on them, or you're going to have to fiddle around with numbers. I prefer to keep them as flat as possible, so I know I can do a 1 to 3 or 1 to 4, and it'll still work just fine. So I prefer the whole shifting resources up and down to the trains as opposed to bringing the resources, or bringing the trains to the resources. Now, uh, let's start plugging this all in. Over there is the start of our little contraption. Now, we are only going to be running two of these at first, namely because we don't have enough uh, conveyor speed on our belts just yet. But once this is finished, we'll be able to upgrade all of these to Mark V belts. Now what this is doing is it's taking in a luminous solution and water, well sorry, bauxite and water and turning it into a luminous solution. We are going to use that aluminum solution to make aluminum scrap, but for that we need some petroleum coke. So let's go grab our oil and plug it in, I'm thinking over this side. So we run a quick crude oil pipe all the way from a refinery down here, or extractor down there, and then it comes into the back of these machines where we turn the crude oil into heavy oil residue. That's the, the reason we, we want as much of this as possible, because heavy oil residue we can turn into, where is it, petroleum coke over here. So it's sort of like a almost a one-to-one -one ratio. All of the crude oil that gets fed in gets turned into heavy oil residue. The heavy oil residue gets fed in here, which gets turned into petroleum coke. However, there's a bit of a problem. This also produces polymer resin. So we need somewhere to, for that to go, which is why this exists over here. This is an awesome sink, and we're just using it to destroy all the polymer resin. Comes out, dumps in here, gone, destroyed, finished. Right, so this over here is producing our aluminum solution, this over here is producing our petroleum coke, and then we're going to plug both of them in here, and this is going to give us our aluminum scrap. However, there's some leftover water we're going to have to deal with, but I, I think I know how we can get around that. Potentially, I've never actually tried playing with it. But let me just run the belting here. For any of you who like nice, clean, efficient stuff, I'm sorry. I really, really am. But uh, I just let everything clip through each other. So the pipes are clipping through the belts. The belts are clipping through the pipes. I really don't mind. So long as whatever was the most convenient and fastest way to put things together, I just went that way. Um, sorry, not sorry. It's just, it was so easy and quick. Why, why do it any other way? Anyway, uh, over here, this is our output. We've got ourselves the petroleum coke, we've got ourselves the uh, alumina solution, we're getting out aluminium scrap, and we're getting out water. Now, the water is a waste product. Basically, this water, they're trying to force us to deal with it. And I was thinking, why not just get this water, 
and feed it back into the start here because at the start we're using water and bauxite to make the aluminum solution in the first place. If we're getting a bunch of water back, we can take that water, plug it back into the system. Now there's, well, there's a problem, you see. Now the problem is these water pumps down here are going to, whoa, whoa, don't drop me, don't stop dropping me. God damn it. These water pumps down here are going to keep filling up these pipes. So what will happen is eventually the pipes will back up and we won't be able to get any of the solution through or any of the water, wastewater coming back in here. So what we've done is we've placed a limiter down here. And nope, not that one here. We've limited to 117 water per minute. Now, oh, yeah, I figured that out with the calculator. That's how much we're missing. So what should happen is if we feed the water from the front round to the back, the water will come from the front and we're going to buffer it in this tank here. Just in case there's any backup or anything like that, this will buy us a whole bunch of time because there's, this can hold 2400 water. Then right after this buffer, before it feeds back into the start where it's going to, you know, mix in all this stuff, we've put in a valve. Now this valve, the great thing about it is it stops backflow. So this is going to make sure that the water can only go one direction and that is this way into the two machines. That should mean that nothing can back up. And if we check here, yeah, you'll see there's no water in any of these yet. And there's plenty of water over here to feed the machines. So in theory, this should work. In practice, well, we'll find out, I suppose. All right. What we have to do now, though, is we need to get this aluminum scrap that's going to be coming out and we need to process that. Uh, this thing produces a lot. Like each one of these produces 300 scrap per minute. That's, a, that's a, just a stupid amount of scrap. And we're going to have to feed that into some smelters. Give me a moment. Here is what the smelters look like. We have 10 of them. Now, uh, the problem is we don't have enough speed uh, to make them all run continuously. There's just too much resources coming out of this. It's putting at 600. Uh, until we actually get the aluminum up and running, we won't be able to support uh, all the resources we're getting out of this. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to... I think we might want to bring copper over here. Though to do that, we might want to make ourselves, well, enough aluminum... Al uh, the Alucad? Yeah, we might want to make enough uh, Alucad to spe uh, transport belted over at 720. Give me a moment. So what I have done here is at the end of the smelters, I've stuck on a bunch of assembly machines. These assembly machines are set up to make the Alucad aluminum sheet. Now, if we can get enough aluminium sheet together, what we can do is start upgrading all the transport belts. However, to do that, we're going to need copper. And copper is very far away right now and we take an awful lot of effort and time. So instead what I've done is put this little transport case here. We can dump a bunch of stuff in that. And I've put a cargo container there. That cargo container can feed copper in there. We just need to bring copper back. And uh, here's a little transport tube section I built earlier. This one, I tried to change how I entered it instead of having a, a run up to it. Instead, we hop on a launch pad. Launch pad launches, this, launches us in the air and then hopefully the speed we're coming down at will give us a good speed boost out of there. There we go. There's our aluminum mine over there. There's our train line going all the way around. Oh, i got to turn off the fog at some point, don't I? But uh, this gets us all the way over this direction. Let's switch to the jetpack so we can smooth out our landing. And here is our base all the way over here where we're going to have to train all of that stuff. Now, where did we put the copper? Oh, that's a bad time for a save game. I think there's some copper over here somewhere. There... Eh, one second, I'll go grab some. Now, if you look down at the butt right, bottom right, we're going to do a fog disable. Uh, or dot fog z space zero. And that should disable fog, so we shouldn't get any of that when we're uh, traveling through the air. As I was like, this is the, the MAM, and if we check under research, you'll notice we've only got two results from analyzing a hard drive. That means these are the only two things left to study. That's it. There, there's... There's nothing else that we can actually access at this tech level. We'll get more when we uh, ex access a few others, but right now I think we'll keep that final hard drive for uh, until we open up a new tech. Okay, right now as well, we've also loaded up on a whole bunch of copper ingots. We're going to take them back with us. So let's just go and have a quick trip. Okay, okay, try and land. Oh, don't spill the coffee. There we go. I do like that we can see our whole train network. You can actually watch it going all the way back around there. That is just beautiful. Uh, there's the bauxite mine. Goes down, feeds into our little factory. Little mini one. Ooh, there's a, there's a blue slug. Let's grab that blue slug while we're going down here. Stop, stop, slow, slow. God damn it. Never mind, we got it. Down here you can see where all the factories are feeding into each other. This is the aluminum ingots. And then all of that aluminium comes in here. And we're just going to dump in the copper ore. Or the copper ingots. Now that should come down here. It fed into this. And boom. We're getting alucad aluminium sheet. 
Thankfully. Oh yeah, I better make a storage container for this. In fact, we're going to need a fifth one of these. Do we now have the resources for it? Yes, we do. Let me just finish this up so we can start play well, well, we can knock out tier 7 transport, or tier 5 transport belt, whatever the highest transport belt level is. After feeding in all that copper, we're able to take out a whole bunch of this stuff, which is good for us. This stacks up to 200, which is far better than the encased industrial beams, and it's just, okay, it may not be easier to make, but end of the day, once you get past the, uh, the starting parts, we can churn out an awful lot of this. Now let's go back and knock out a couple of technology, shall we? I'm not sure how long it will take me to get tired of jumping into the tubes this way. Whoop. And away we go. You do get to, like, travel across the entire place. Where are we? On the map. Yep. That is a hell of a travel distance. They really did make a beautiful map. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll sort out a couple of texts once we land. No, no, left, left, left. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I should probably should have changed the jetpack. <laughs> Don't care. It, it, we'll, we'll go collect our corpse just really quickly. <laughs> God, we move so slow. Now, where did we put that body? It should be over here somewhere. Oh, wow. It landed up there. Uh, you can... No. Give me, give me the box. Give me the box. Yep. Take all. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Next time, i got to remember earlier to put on the jetpack. All right. Uh, where were we? Yes, we were going to come over here and knock out some tech. We can go in here and the logistic belts... We've got the Alucad for that, and also for the hover pack, we all... Oh, you know what? Let's knock out both of these at the same time. We get the hover pack with more inventory slots, and we can get the conveyor belts. We have Mark V belts ready to be shot out, and we also have... Where is it? Hover pack. Milestone Whoop. reached. Impl That's nice. And second one, done. Milestone reached. Thank you. Now, next up is going to be these aluminum casings. They're not actually that bad. Oh, we need some copper for that, and we can knock out hazmat suits, and that'll get us closer to nuclear, and... Ooh, we will need to then do radio control units. A little bit more painful, I will admit. Then we're going to get onto supercomputers, which... Yep, that's also going to be a little bit more painful than more radios, aluminum... Oh, fused modular frames, more supercomputers. This is the high-end stuff. We'll be getting to that at the very end, but I'm thinking next up, we want to finish off the automation of our... Uh, or uh, aluminum production. So I'm going to bring over some more copper and then that's going to get us enough Alucad to hopefully run enough copper there to automate the whole thing f completely. Out on the map here, we've got these two normal copper nodes. They're, well, they're a distance away. Our, our bauxite refining, our aluminum refining is down here. So we're going to have to run a transport belt or we could hook it into our train line. I think though I'm just going to run a transport belt, namely because we've got a bunch of the stuff and well, I kind of want to get it up and running sooner rather than later. I really should plug it into the train network, but... I'm lazy. All right, uh, let's run this all the way back to base. Also, we're going to need to run a power wire as well. That's going to suck. Maybe we should... You know what? No, we'll run an actual power wire the whole way too. After checking the numbers on this, it turns out even to run about 720 aluminum ingots, I'd only... And if I put half of that towards Alucad and the other half towards you know, whatever the other stuff is called, we're only going to need about 140 copper ore. So... Yeah, actually, you know what? I'll just crank these up to normal speed. There's no point underclocking them. At some point, we'll probably want to specialize a lot more in the uh, aluminum cladding just so that we can churn out more of the uh, transport belts. We're going to have to upgrade our entire bus at some point. Not the entire bus, just the uh, the steel ingots part. But yeah, this belt actually goes damn fast and give you a nice bit of a speed boost all the way back to base. This is a little bit of a long one. Not going to lie. Oh, yeah, we went through that. Who cares? Fine, fine, fine. Come on, come on. Uh, never mind. All the way back here is where our base is. This will take me a minute. Back here you can see where the uh, the bauxite is coming down. And the copper just continues straight on and plugs into a few smelters down here. And we're just using that to smelt up some copper ore. And... Done. So now that I plug that in, I could have sworn I plugged that in. Oh wait, I never set up the recipe today. Never mind. This is what we were basically trying to achieve. About 300 al uh, aluminum cladding. I'm just going to call it aluminum cladding. It's easier that way instead of alcal. Al 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 so, this aluminum cladding, all we needed was this. Basically, one oil refinery. I kind of went to 1.5. I messed up and did the numbers a bit wrong at the start. So, I cut back to one for that. Uh, one petroleum coke refinery, one and a half for sloppy aluminum, two refineries just to give us aluminum scrap, 10 smelting the pure ingots, and then another 10. Uh, or what do you call it, assemblers, smelting the actual Alucad aluminum sheet. 
and about uh, three and a, three and one third copper ingot smelters. But I put down five just so we had a little bit of extra. Why not? And this is all done. We're producing 300 cladding per minute, which we can turn into as much transport belt as we want. Now, I have definitely overbuilt this, but I kind of wanted to. Why not? You know, it's just those days. Right, but there was something else we needed to do. Aluminum casing. Now, this stuff is a little bit different. Actually, slightly simpler, to be honest. We're going to use pretty much the same... Uh, uh, we're going to use half of our incoming bauxite to make this stuff. And this is what it's going to look like. Basically, one heavy residue running one petroleum coke. We've already got that built. Uh, 1.5 sloppy aluminum. Already got that done. Uh, then we're going to need to turn that into scrap the scrap refinery. But we've got those up. We haven't actually just plugged them in yet. And then... 10 smelters for the pure ingots, and then we spit them out into some constructors on the other side. Four constructors should be able to produce us more than enough aluminum casing. Ooh, and I should go around and upgrade this belt bringing us in the bauxite. That needs to be all upgraded to Mark V belt. Ooh. So yeah, that I, I think I'll do that first, then we'll plug in the last bits. So this over here is our two refineries feeding two refineries, being fed by two refineries that produces all of that aluminum scrap that goes down here and gets turned into the aluclad. Then what we're going to do is do, well, basically the same thing over this side. These two refineries fed by those two refineries and those two refineries will produce a whole bunch of scrap, which will get fed into 10 metal uh, ah, refineries. And then we will turn all of that using, actually, it's only going to take about three or four assembling machines. And we should be able to turn all of that into the aluminum cladding we're looking for. Or not aluminum cladding, the aluminum casing. That's what they're called. Right. We're producing 200 aluminum casing per minute. That should be enough. Perfect. And that is all of the aluminum section done. With those two outputs there, all we have to do is feed them into a train station and bring them back to the main base. However, the whole purpose of today was, was just to get the aluminum casings and stuff up so that we could make one thing. Where is it? Under production blenders. Blenders require aluminum placing and radios. And we needed to get our hands on, or was it a second? Let's grab some of these. Yep, so we needed these and the aluminum cladding at the same time, so we built all of this just so we could build blenders, so we could build diluted fuel to expand our power grid. Right now, our home base, the uh, power on it is running, well, none of the machines are really running, so our power demand is quite low, but the moment we start turning everything back on again, we will flatline the grid. So we've got to do up our power. And now, now we have the tools to do it. And that is going to be our episode for the day. We've got our, we've got our train network built, though I never actually managed to utilize it just yet. Um... Jetpack. We've also managed to build up all the entire aluminum section. We've got most of our infrastructure in place. It's just a case of plugging it all in now. Oh, and power. Lots and lots of power. Oh, slow down. I love the speeds you can get out of this, though. It's incredible. You can cross basically the entire map at one of those jump pads. We're going to have to invest in a, an even bigger grid of those. Every time we expand to a new location, we're going to have to install some of those. They just make life so much simpler. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here for the day. I hope you enjoyed and good luck.